I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just as sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So I found something out recently. Yes. And that is dogs are expensive. Uh, like to purchase or maintain? To purchase. Maintain, I know. I know how expensive they are to maintain. But yeah. purchase a dog? Uh, if you're trying to get a purebred dog, it's ludicrously expensive. Oh, that I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lissa and I were at the Crossgates recently. Okay. And we ended up in the pet store for whatever reason. Yeah. And we saw a corgi puppy there, and he was adorable. Mm-hmm. And we played around with him a little bit uh, just to see. And um, we asked how much he was, and they said, wait for it, $2,600. Oh. And I was just damn. like, he's adorable, but, but he's not, not $2,600 adorable. Yeah. adorable. Because $2,600 is like living for two months. Yeah, you should, <laughs> you should have been like, you know, technically, this is a perishable item, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was that was wild. And then we looked around, because uh, I guess we're getting a dog now. Okay. <laughs> that, that's just what's happening. Yeah. Um, so we were looking around, and the only reasonably priced corgis we could find were some from some Mennonites. Yeah. And uh, I don't really think that's a safe move because Mennonites and Amish people tend to have this thing where they don't recognize that other animals have, you know, they don't have empathy for animals uh, in general. Yeah. Uh, so they overbreed their dogs frequently. Uh, and there's like yeah, no you, guarantees. You don't want to put money towards something that could contribute to, towards that. Yeah, you don't really want to contribute towards uh, puppy mills in general. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so right now, we might be getting a Chewini mix. You should get a Chewini mix because I want to be like, oh, yeah, my friend's got a Chewini and just have to explain what that means. Oh, it's uh, well, it's an adorable one, too. We have an interview. You have a cute Chewini? Of- we have an interview for this Chewini. Yeah. Um, the day before... This podcast launches so tomorrow. Chawini. So it's it's a it's a Chihuahua Dachshund mix. Although this one has, oh, uh, they're cute. She's got this one's got a possibly Labrador mixed in with her. Yeah, and she looks adorable. I'm not looking forward to taking care of a Chewini dog, but I really hope that this dog. Uh, terrorizes the cat that terrorizes me oh okay that's that's currently where i'm at it's it's a vengeance play yeah (laughs) just you'll roll up to the house one day like welcome i have brought your new nemesis (laughs) basically that's what i'm hoping for a new challenger has entered the field oh man he's gonna be so upset dakota won't care because dakota grew up around dogs and cats Jiro will care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jiro will care very much because he's not used to it. Yeah. Oh, um, that'll be good. So, yeah, that's 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 a thing that's happening to me. Nice. I guess. I, I was not expecting to ever own a dog, but, you know, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, that's for what, what's with the uh, sur- sudden uh, puppy turn? Or is it just... Uh... But, Lissa wanted a puppy. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh. I don't I don't care because I grew up near dogs, so for me it's like Yeah, you grew up near dogs and you have cats, so you know like the proper way to keep them from getting the stuff. Yeah, well, I wish I knew the proper way to keep cats from getting the stuff, but they just they just figure it out. Yeah. It's weird that Jiro can uh pick locks now. 
you say that, Brandon, but he's pretty close to picking locks. That's like, very upsettingly good. close. Yeah, he's a cat burglar. Yes, he is a cat burglar. He's a nightmare creature. Oh. And I just I don't know how to deal with it anymore because he's got this really, really fun thing that he does in the mornings now mm-hmm. where he wakes up at 5 a.m., uh, decides he wants to eat food, attaches his legs underneath my uh, – attaches his paws to underneath the bed and just, like, skitters. <laughs> uh, so that's a great way to wake up every morning for the past yeah. month, for the past year. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. There's, it sounds like it. Yes, I'm not going completely insane. No. I'll no. just build a little cat tower out of cardboard boxes. Mm. Well, he, we have a cat. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brandon. We have a cat tower. Yeah, use it for, but use if you it for, use it, buy it for them, they won't use it. That's the thing. He doesn't use it. There's instead instead he likes to jump on the shelf that I used to have transformers on and shatter them. <laughs> how's now? The, there's no. How's Dakota's angry chair doing? I, I haven't looked at the angry chair in a bit. Well, you haven't been over in a bit, so I know. Uh, the angry chair is still an angry chair. Okay. Uh, he does love to sleep in the angry chair. Uh, typically, typically, uh, covering his own face because uh, he doesn't like the light. No, he's he's. This is this is great for people who don't know my cats. No, he's a snaggletooth vampire demon, and then he Jiro is. is just like a run of the mill shadow demon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's. Basically, uh, having Jiro in my life has allowed me to understand why black cats have been um, maligned oh, for centuries. Yeah. yeah, because they're all insane. Yeah, and I I have a hypothesis that the reason black cats are so insane is because they like basically the ones that were insane were selected, like like naturally selected to be insane because the ones that weren't insane got killed. Oh, and okay. the ones that were insane made it away because they yeah. were wily little bastards. And now, and now it's just like centuries later, after all of that 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 stuff, and it's like, yeah, uh, I guess this is the way that things go now. So I, I've seen those like uh, uh, things on Reddit where like it's a cat and they stand up and walk on their back legs for a little bit. Do you think mm-hmm. if we find cats that can do that and keep breeding them together we could make a bipedal cat now brandon yeah are you talking about a furry reality uh i'm not because i talking feel about, like that's what you're you're leading towards i'm talking about a reality where those uh animals from uh monster hunter are real that's fair okay that will probably eventually happen hopefully hopefully i mean it's it would take a very long time, but... I mean, that's why we have to get started now. Like, the clocks are ticking. Let, let's start a... We'll get a Kickstarter. We'll have everyone sh- mail us their uh, their cats that can walk on their back legs. Prepaid, like, shipping label. Mail in, in them? Box. Yeah, yeah. And they'll, 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 like, show up on the doorstep or get jammed in the mailbox. We'll, we'll breed them. We'll train them. Uh, we can try to teach them to cook, but I think that's farther down the line before we can make that Monster Hunter quest thing a reality. But eventually, yeah, that will become a reality. That's a little bit. That's a little bit far down the line. Um, I don't think so. I think maybe like it's a long time, but like seven years. Well, but here's the thing: I don't want to give. Okay, here's here's the problem with your your whole thing. Uh, will these cats have cat level empathy, or will they have? a different kind of empathy because here's, this is a crucial point because if they have cat level empathy, we have a bunch of bipedal sociopaths running around who may or may not know how to use a knife. They, I think it will be <gasps> slightly less than cat level empathy because their hips aren't meant to work that way. So they'll always be in a little bit of pain and therefore care a little bit less. So that's, that's actually the worst possible reality you've just described. Yeah, but, like, it could be, like, a new form of, like, torture or... For who? Maybe, like, babysitters. 
I, I don't know if I'd trust a cat, a bipedal cat who's constantly in pain as a babysitter. Why not? Like, they're, like listen, just the tummy, the soft part, the tum-tum, will be so much easier to access on all cats if they were standing upright. That would just make them angrier. <laughs> and then, like... You're just, you're just making things worse, Brandon. No, and, and, and uh, no, just exposed tummies. They can cook. They have a little less empathy towards really everything and everyone. Um, Brandon, a, a little less empathy towards everything and everyone on a cat is like literally like serial killer. Yeah, but then they could like carry the hand basket around Hannaford for you. But, okay, or you could just get a cart. Or you could have a bipedal cat. Listen, bipedal cat will beat out any alternative of anything. I don't know if that's true. That's the most truest statement that has ever been said. On this podcast or in general? In general, throughout history. It, it might be the most true statement on this podcast, but I don't think throughout history. And then also think about how much fun you could have with, oh, okay, like, don't... Actually, I'm going to cut all this out so nobody knows about it, but we're still going to work on it. And then okay, we're going to yeah. find somebody who still smokes weed. And we're going to make um, them get a, a little bit too high and then we will introduce them to the bipedal cats and just observe the reaction I, I just I, I don't know how to react to that <laughs> it would be upsetting. the best it would be it would the be, best I can think of one person in particular who I would use as the case study I can think of several and it is a very good idea I'm not going to lie. If bipedal cats were a thing, I might be interested in, 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 in doing this thing. Yes. And just not mentioning it to them. Just don't let tell the them. cats, just let the cats walk in. Don't we, listen as the observer, you can't interact with a cat. Some would say, make it almost as if the cat doesn't really exist. The cat's not really there. <laughs> imagine, imagine breeding a race of, Honestly, this would be a new creature. Yeah. At the, like, at, at, if a cat was at the point where it was bipedal, it would be a new species, most likely. It, you're probably not going to be able to breed with cats that are not in this bipedal race. Just plain and simple. Um, Hello, well, felinensis. There. Dubbed it. I, I feel like that's wrong, but... Because I think homo isn't... I don't know. Sapus is the species, right? Sa Feli sapiens. Uh, well, no, because they're not sapiens, because that's... All right, well... <laughs> We're going into a lot of a lot of depth on this, this, this hypothetical thing that... And I might add, neither of us are biologists, Brandon. Listen, half the kitty litter gets tracked on the floor because they're standing upright. And that's if we can't teach them to use a little kitty cat-sized urinal. Can't we teach them to use a kitty cat-sized urinal without worrying about the, uh, the bipedal bits? Because, like, I mean... Uh, in Meet the Par Meet the F what was it? Meet the Parents? Yeah, Meet the Parents. Uh, Jinxie Cat learned how to use a toilet. That's true, and I've seen those kits on Amazon, how you can train your cat. So, I mean, I think it would be better to do that, although my favorite part is how in Meet the Fockers, the sequel, because of course there's a sequel. There's actually a third movie, I believe. Little Fockers. Is it Little Fockers? Yep. Yeah. That's, that's weird, but whatever. So, in the second movie, Jinxie Cat learns how to use the toilet. Yeah. How, how to use the how to use the flusher. Uh-huh. And it and is he's, amazing. He's vengeful. He's yeah. a vengeful boy. Is Jinxie Cat a boy? I think Jinx, Jinx was a boy. Uh was it cuz in the first movie I think they spoke about uh milking uh the well, cat. You can milk uh, you can male female and male cats have nipples. Yeah. Well, there's the whole like joke in that scene was He's like, are you gonna melt? Are you gonna you milk me? Yeah, he's like, I have nipples. Can you milk me? Uh, what is the cat's name in Meet the Parents? Will there be a Meet the Parents four? Is the third question that people ask. I mean, hopefully. However, it appears that the tr atrocious little Fockers was the final nail in the coffin of the unnecessary Meet the Parents franchise. Stiller said there are currently no plans for a fourth film. Oh, good. Uh, at least there's some justice in this world. Yeah. 
Uh, so, at this point, let's say, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm looking at pictures of Jinx the Cat. I mean, as you should. It's a ragdoll, I think. No, it's a Himalayan. Himalayan. Okay. Long hair cat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I was the rag doll's the short hair variety, I think. Or medium hair. Whatever. I don't care. It's cats. Cats are cats. Cats are cats. Except so, for the bipedal ones. <laughs> Which look for in a store not even a store. We'll just mail them out to you. Or oh like little like bicycles that they can ride. I was thinking I was thinking of just releasing them into the wild. And letting them run terror, like be be just pure terror. Oh, and build little saddles for deer. Yes, deer. Do we want to do deer? I I, I was thinking like boars, boar like little ooh, little boar saddles. Yeah, like getting a bunch of pigs and just like like wild wild boars and just like yeah, like releasing them as like companions to the mm-hmm. the bipedal cats. They're yeah. best friends until the cat decides it's hungry and eats the boar. Oh yes. Which will happen oh. pretty quick, actually. Yeah. Because <laughs> let's not forget, let's not forget, these bipedal cats, they have knives. Or like, and they know how to use them. Like a little Petco being robbed by a horde of cats with little tiny balaclavas, little ski masks. And they just and... go and take all the fancy feasts. <laughs> it's like, it'll be like uh, the Mad Max of Fancy Feast. So instead of yeah. water, it's just Fancy Feast in like cat treats and catnip all being stolen constantly you can't go to a petco with a, a fully stocked cat section anymore oh yeah they just say welcome to thund per dome the thund per dome yeah do they do they like have um do they have like gladiatorial combat with the dogs oh of course yeah i'm assuming yeah Although PetSmart doesn't have dogs PetSmart has cats no i don't know if it's so, even gladiatorial combat cuz it'd still be regular dogs so it'd be an awful lot like assassinations <laughs> well but no i'm saying i'm saying pit dogs against dogs so like the coliseum had animal fights yeah so it would be kind of like that oh. they probably would eventually take control of humans and put them into the into the gladiatorial fights let's be real i mean they already can like my house is really my cat's house and they just let me be here yeah that's that's fair i mean like they domesticated us. Yeah. That's mostly through toxoplasmosis. Yes, I definitely have it. Oh, yep. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure most of my friends who like cats have it. Can they test for that? Should I get lab work done? You can't test for it until, like, after you're dead. Because it's, oh. like, crystals in your brain. I mean, that, that, that can be arranged. Fair. <laughs> I mean, you won't you I won't, won't know, I won't know what the answer. Someone will. Yeah. So, today's creature may be found in Ohio. It looks mm-hmm. like a uh, like a cephalopod in appearance. It was first seen in 1959, and it is no longer seen today. Do you have any guesses on what this could be? Can I ask a clarification point? Yes. So, it looks like a cephalopod. Well, octo- is it water? Like octopus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it waterbound or no? Uh, yeah, uh, mostly. Not exclusively, but most sightings are in the water. Mm, okay, I'm gonna say, okay, well, it's out of their range, typically, but I'm gonna say it's a, uh, uh, Georgian mud squid. A Georgian mud squid? It is not the Georgian mud squid. Do, do you know what a, do you know what a, uh, 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 Georgian mud squid, squid is? I do not. Uh, one second. I uh, uh, keep going. I'll I'll listen. I'm gonna get a get a thing for you. Okay, good. <laughs> so today. Oh wait, gonna... no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I had it wrong. The Appalachian mud squid. No, I also don't know about the Appalachian mud squid. Okay, okay. Give me give me a minute. Okay. So today we're gonna be talking about the Ohio River Octoman. Okay. The, what? <laughs> Wait, I, I was making okay. So I was I was setting up for a different joke, and this is this is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Um. What? 
Yeah. The Ohio Re- the Ohio River Octoman. So, okay, here's here's my question. Okay. How does it how is it related to Octodad? Cuz that Oct- was a very fun game. It it does not relate to Octodad. Uh, it's a, it is a frustrating game. It's a fun game though. It's fun to watch people play. That's true. It's it's definitely a game I enjoy watching people play. And actually, it was like one of those games because that came out in 2014. Deadliest Catch it? came out in 2014. It came uh, out before that. Okay. Um, because yeah, it came out in 2010 originally. Yeah. And it was a like game jam game. Uh, developers of the sequel ba, 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 ba. the game was developed for the student showcase of the 2011 independent games festival which I was actually at I think no I was at the next year um, and it was one of the eight winners in the student showcase okay uh, so that's about roughly the time that I was going into my master's program for game design development so that that game has like a weird like place in my my memories because yeah. it's like weirdly related to some of the times that I was uh some of my education but regardless yeah. regardless okay <laughs> I, I that was that was me going on a yeah. tangent because it tangent I liked what Octodad. We do. yeah I well we talked about we talked about cats with walking on two legs for literally uh 15 minutes I want to yep. say yep 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 so yep. <laughs> uh, so on Thursday, January 29th, 1959, in Richmond, Ohio, located 82 miles south of Cle- Cleveland, Ohio, and two miles north of the current Walmart distribution center. Oh, uh, man. The, po- yeah. <laughs> the police received a panicked report from a man who is about to stroll along the beautiful Ohio River. The man was- claims he had seen something that resembled an octopus emerge from the chilled waters and called it quote, indescribable and something not of this earth. The additional, mm. uh, no additional details are available, and it still remains an anonymous account that the authorities seem to have ignored, that is, until some more calls came in. So, okay, here's my question. Yes. On a scale from uh, not at all hentai to hentai, how hentai is this story going to get? This isn't actually going to get any hentai-ishness. Really? Yeah. That's something I hadn't thought about. I'm happy you brought that up. Because, I, you know, I'm just thinking, if there's if, if there are tentacles... I mean, I'm sure someone's, now that you say that, someone's done that. Oh, yeah. I I bet you Oct- uh, Octoman Rule 34 is a thing. Oh... My my safe shirt is not on. Oh good. Oh cool. Uh rule thirty four dot XXX has one, two, three, four, five, six hits. Although one of them sue you. Oh which okay. is uh not okay. Oh, this is upsetting. Oh, it's F zero. Oh, this is really upsetting. Oh no. Oh you no, Brandon. Brought that upon yourself. <laughs> Brandon. There's a lot of there's a lot of gay porn with Octoman. <laughs> I didn't realize F Zero had Octoman in it. You you have wrought this upon yourself. Oh boy, oh. this is some weird porn. <laughs> this is some really weird. Why is Hatsune Miku there? I mean, just ha- because. Fair, I I guess. I, I don't know. She has heart. She has heart pupils. That's terrifying. Yeah. What the fuck? What is happening? Th- this makes no sense. I searched Octoman Rule 34, right? Yeah. I'm getting hits for uh, Hotel Transylvania. Uh, Good. I've got a Mega Mewtwo here, although Good. it's not 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 porn related. Uh, Doctor Octopus is showing up. Um, Captain Falcon. And just a bunch of like weird. What is this? All right, I'm done. This okay. is this is taking a weird turn. Well, the next strange call that authorities received came from a truck driver who was traveling towards Cincinnati uh, when he had spotted another strange creature in the Little Miami River, about three and a half 
uh, hours by road from Richmond, uh, mm-hmm. around the same time as the first report had come in. He called from a service station near Kellogg Avenue near the River Bridge. This driver also described the creature as indescribable. That is my favorite thing, because the act of describing it as indescribable is literally a description. Yes. <laughs> That's my, like, like uh, what is it? Every time I read a uh, H.P. Lovecraft book, it's always like, oh, man, oh, man, it's so wild. You could not even begin to imagine, oh, my God. God, it's so weird. Like, I, I can't even start to tell you how this is. It's just so big and so, like, whoa, whoa, man. That's basically every description of every creature in the H.P. Lovecraft universe. Yes. Uh, particularly the color out of space, which was literally, like, it's a weird oh. color. Yeah. Although I like that one a lot. That's actually probably one of my favorite H.P. Lovecraft books, it stories. A it's a really good one, and it actually... uh. It's the most alien alien story that I've ever read. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because because it's not like a living creature. It's like it it ex- it kind of like uh, it's just extant. Like that's it's extant. Yeah, yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah. Interesting note. Uh, I believe that the the reservoir near where we live, the Shokan Reservoir, I yeah. think that's where the story took place. What? Yeah, because they talk about it being a, a reservoir being filled in and how huh. I wouldn't be drinking the water from that, that reservoir or whatever. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the driver also claimed that he had never seen anything like it before. All I want to do is get out of here. And this time the police did show up on the scene, but they were unable to find anything strange, let alone beyond description. That they know of. That they know of. That we know of, because if it was beyond description, Brandon, yeah, there wouldn't be a description of it. True, and there still isn't. Uh, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say there was a lot of stuff beyond description there because yeah. it was not described. Okay, <laughs> that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, a dispatcher at the station said that we didn't do anything after the first call. After the second one, we asked Hamilton County Police if they had heard about it. Uh, we both sent cars out after 4 a.m. and chased ghosts for a couple of hours, but we didn't find anything. <laughs> There's, was that the Doctor Who theme? Uh, uh-huh. It was It was supposed to be more of a, um X-Files theme, but I yawned. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it really was a right here. We kept waiting for someone to say, take me to your leader. This is still a quote from the dispatcher. <laughs> okay. Uh, to add to the mystery... All the streetlights along Kellogg Avenue from Lucan Airport to Coney Island went out about the same time. Please say I, the lights... Huh? I, I love it when there's places named stuff like Coney Island when there's, like, the more famous Coney Island. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's always It always boggles my mind because, like, I'm like... That happens to me a lot of times when I'm doing research for these stories when it's, like... Oh, I was looking for places, and there was just Kingston, Canada that kept coming up. I was like, I don't want to go to fucking Canada. No, that's fair. Um, Also, also, uh, Kellogg Avenue, if you need an enema, let me tell you, best place in the country to get an enema. That's a reference that is lost on me, and now I'm concerned. You don't get it? No. No. Oh, all right. Let me see if there's a dollop on it. I'll send you it because uh, oh, Kellogg, Kellogg was a weirdo. Kel- oh, no, I heard the dollop on the Kellogg. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kellogg was a weirdo. Yeah. There's also a really great joke in uh, West of Loathing as well uh, where you can actually go to, like, the Kellogg health retreat or whatever. You can. I got stuck on West of Loathing. Trying Did to get- you? Yeah, I can't get the train out of wherever the train's stuck. I loved that game. I I beat it like hard, hard beat. Oh damn! I think I was a what was I? Was I a bean mancer? I was a bean mancer. I think I was a bean mancer or whatever it was called. Yeah. Uh, police say that the lights are on two different circuits, so uh, that so far they have been unable to find why the lights went out. Uh, most dis- dispatchers who received calls about the monster agree that the callers sounded shaken but sober. And they offer a number of theories of what the men might have seen. It's not really that hard to sound shaken. No. Especially, Especially if you're sitting nowadays. on a washing machine. Uh, no, it's pretty easy. 
Frank B. Heisler, a Claremont County dispatcher, believes that the men might have seen a tree bobbing up and down in the water. Uh, Cincinnati police for a time thought that maybe someone had an auto accident, hit a pole, and rolled over in the mud, and this would explain why the lights went out along Kellogg Avenue and that um, and what was seen coming up out of the water, but they were unable to find any broken poles. That's horrifying. Yeah. Let me, like, like okay, so uh, I honestly think that the, the tree bobbing up and down in the water is the most reasonable thing so far, but let me just say, if that was what happened, that person had a terrible night. Oh, yes. Like, awful. That is an awful experience. I feel so bad for that human. Oh, yeah. Uh, which, that didn't happen because they couldn't find any broken poles or anyone that... Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. Luckily. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> William Sprague, a lockman at Dam 37 Avenue... Uh, Fernbank also thinks the men might have seen a tree drifting downstream. Mr. Sprague said that, I've been on duty since midnight. I look out over the river a good deal of the time, and I never saw a thing. Hmm. Uh, he said that the winds were strong all night and whipped up six to eight feet high. What? Yeah, that's crazy. Wait, wait, wait. What? This is in the Ohio River? That's not even a tidal river. No. What? Yeah. Like, if someone said that about, okay, here's here's what I'm going to say. If someone said that about the Hudson, I'd be like that's pretty bad. That's rough sea. That's rough yeah, weather. That's rough. But don't go boat. But but it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> that just sounds insane to me. Yeah. Uh <laughs> the 6 8 foot high uh that could fool a man. The wind tore a lot of driftwood loose too. I've been out on the river at night. And uh, the trees floating by in a dim light look spooky. Maybe the monster was a tree. So we've got another guy saying, ah, it's probably a tree. It's sounding an awful lot like a tree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this creature began to pick up traction after the Cincinnati Post and Times Star in an article titled, What is it? Monster Turns Up the Ohio. Uh, the previous info, sh info shared was, was from the article. On Friday, the following day, eyewitnesses still insist that an indescribable monster is bobbing around playfully in the greater Cincinnati rivers and streams. Then felt, yeah. Get get binoculars and describe it. Get somebody please describe it to me. I like like at 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 a certain point I'm just like I'm like if if no one can describe this to me, I'm just going to go swim out to it. <laughs> yeah, uh a fellow who says he's a scientist working on things out of this world says he was driving across the Licking River Friday morning when something leaped onto the bridge. Okay, I just want to take a moment to, to, and to, to go over that sentence. sentence. Go over that sentence. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because I want to know. Okay, all right. So first of all, first of all, he's a scientist. He claims he's a scientist. He's just working on things out of this world. Uh huh. Okay, so it's in this person, this person is already predisposed to believing in the fantastic. Uh huh. Just, just want to point that out there. Second, more importantly, who names a river Licking River? I didn't name it. But, but Brandon, where did that name come from? I mean, a little horn dog is my guess. <laughs> 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 oh man i'm now imagining uh the camp the night that they discovered licking river oh no it's Feel the one that. guy named earl and he's like what it's my thing i like it it's my thing yeah <laughs> unlike having a uh unlike last week's episode where it was not that man's thing until it no was. yeah <laughs> Oh, this, uh, quote, scientist, self-proclaimed scientist, uh, d described it as, uh, quote, it was large, not a dog or a cat. It leapt in front of my car and on two legs. It was taller than the auto. So let, let me, I want to stop that. Some, it's clearly something that's between the sizes of dog and car. Yeah, that's a pretty wide range. Yeah, 
And he said, "Now, that, what kind of dog is it?" I too, because like that matters. Yeah, I was picturing a a, ch- a chawini. God damn it! Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he said that when he looked back in his mirror, it was moving along the bridge rail saying, quote, it was three or four times the size of a man and much bulkier. I have an eye and mind for dimensions and I know it was huge. So the, the guy with an eye and mind for dimensions can clearly describe this as something that is bigger than a dog, a, a bit taller than his auto, which is a weird thing to call a car. And yeah. three or four times the size of a man. So he's also, clearly I, got an eye for dimensions. I want to point out, he was looking in the mirror. And things are closer than they appear in that mirror. They are. It was right That's behind him. Yeah. He so, should have drive, driven faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, a young lady claims she spotted the thing in a creek near the Fort Thomas pumping station, saying that it was an octopus, and it came up and then moved down. This is so, like, okay, all right. I just want to take a moment. This is four sightings, I want to say? Mm -hmm. Three sightings? Somewhere in there, right? Uh, This is the third sighting, this this girl. Yes. Fourth, actually. No, this girl's the fourth sighting. Because the first two, then the guy seeing the one on the rail, and now this girl. So that's four people. And based on the description you've given me, they're very far apart, these sightings. They're not like, it's not like a closely dense thing. It's not, like, at least in the case of the Murphy Burroughs Mud Monster, for example, or uh, the Mothman, they were fairly localized. Yeah, and by... these are, if I had to guess, like a three-hour diametric circle Which area. is crazy if it's an octopus man. Yeah, he gets uh, around. I, I like like I could see based on the reports of Mothman, it would make more sense for Mothman to see, be seen three hours away from a sighting because it's moving like seventy five miles per hour while it's flying or faster. Yeah, this is an octopus man. It'd be it, it's lucky if it can move five miles per hour on land because it's just slurping. It's just slurping. It's just slurping everywhere. Not to say that they're not smart. Maybe they have underwater technology that they're not letting people know. Because from what I've seen, the, uh, the Ohio River is pretty brackish and dark and like gloomy. Yeah. It's not brackish because brackish has salt. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's muddy. Yeah. Um, an 11-year-old phoned the... Post and time start to ask if the green men were really coming out of the river in groups of 12, as his teachers said they were. Man, 11-year-olds are the most trustworthy witnesses in these cases. Well, they weren't a witness. They're asking because I guess the teacher made a joke. And they, so they called the newspaper like, are there really green men coming to get us? <laughs> uh, a woman pulled onto the curb Saturday and yelled to a reporter, we saw that thing this morning. Now you're going to put my name in the paper and call me a crackpot? <laughs> I don't know if she was serious or if she was just messing with the dude. I don't know. That's the hardest part. Also, they can't put your name in the paper if you just don't say your name. Mm-hmm. That's the easiest yeah. thing. Uh, the creature still had an extremely weak description at this point. It seems that no one had really got a good look at it, uh, given that th- this is a water creature that's somewhat understandable. Like, if it's... Except- Except the time it wasn't, it was. Yeah, except the time that it was, like, explicitly out of the water walking around. Yeah. It's it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's never been seen out of the water, except the times that it's been seen out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so not long after these sightings, another woman called uh, in her own report, saying that she had seen it hunched over by the Ohio River and gave a remarkably detailed description, so no longer indescribable, uh, nice. saying that it was a strange grayish creature with a lopsided chest, ugly tentable, tentacles, tentacles hey. and rolls of fat running horizontally over a bald head. Hey, it sounds like she's body shaming this Octo- Octoman. And listen, Octoman, if you're listening to this podcast, you're beautiful. 
Don't body shame the Octo Man. No, because the Octo Man will tear you apart with his suction cups. Yeah. It's a fact. It is. It's, it's a fact. He will tear you limb from limb if he exists. Yeah, but again, that might be someone's thing. I mean, it's explicitly someone's thing. Yeah. It's explicitly someone's thing. Yeah. I think that there are subsets of four that have that. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, four's yeah. fun. No. Uh, during this period of time. <laughs> <laughs> During this period of time, the area is whipped into mass hysteria, with people spreading rumors that it may be the start of an alien invasion. Groups of men carrying guns began patrolling the river, looking for the creature. Some, of course, thought it was some form of yet-to-be-discovered water monster. I mean, it could always just be a freshwater octopus. Maybe. Is that a thing? I don't know much about octopus. Pussy. I don't Octopuses. think it's a thing. I don't think it's a thing, but, like... Like I said, there's the Appalachian mud squid. True. But that's from that terrible TV show that was very good. Terrible? Excuse me. Also, freshwater octopus are a thing. Oh, Actually, great. they're explicitly a thing. And get this. Where's get that? this. Uh, oh, wait a second. No, this is not real. Oh, okay, I was going to say, please tell me Ohio. One of them says the Ohio River, but I'm looking at this right now, and it's looking as though this was on the It's Something wiki. Yeah, this is why we do research. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, weird. A, when was this case? Uh, 1959. Okay, so I just found uh, an article on Octolab.tv that will be interesting, but we can talk about this later. Okay. Uh, but basically, in 1998, a dead octopus was discovered on the bank of the Ohio River in the state of Indiana. Oh. But it was belonging to one of the Atlantic sea species, and its body was not in a state of decomposition. Um, I'm assuming that probably means it probably fell off of aquarium truck oh uh, maybe something if like i've that. learned anything from the documentary of uh finding dory ah yes mm -hmm. uh just as quickly as the creature or at least the sightings of it came they then went one newspaper wrote that uh what 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 was it that five or possibly six apparently unrelated observers saw in the wee hours of that icy winter's eve i'm Where assuming did this the possibly I'm assuming possibly six is the woman who drove up and said, want to call me a crackpot? Yeah. <laughs> Where did this thing come from? And perhaps most intriguingly, why has it been never been seen either before or since? And just as a reminder that the sightings began on Thursday and by Saturday, the local police said that the phone calls had stopped claiming that the monster or had stopped and that they claimed the monster left town. So this was just two days. That's... Also, like, well, it's three days, or is it two days because it's night? Two full days. Two yeah. Full days. Okay. Um, so that means that. How did that? How did that teacher? Man, that teacher must have been really up on it. Or people used to read the news local newspaper a lot more than they do today. <laughs> that, or my guess is because that isn't an actual sighting that the teacher is poking fun at it the following week. Yeah, but but if it if the things have been cited in the two days i always have a difficulty with chronology on historical events because the way that historical events are repeated is sometimes very confusing yeah anywho sorry oh. uh so some theories that i found uh were that this may be some unknown creature that burrows into the mud at the bottom of the river and hibernates and was never seen again any or years before. since or before yeah uh, that, that makes sense that makes sense uh-huh uh, the, the creature itself is a combination of both animal and plant tissue. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that's a plot from some of the Hammer monster films, so good luck with that. Okay. Uh, that it is some form of alien, either lost or the scout for a larger number that were just waiting to receive a report. Ah, uh, yes. The most, the most fun one. Uh-huh. 
And uh, one article I found said that this Octoman may be in some way linked to the Loveland Frogman. Reference Cryptopedia Episode 8, The Hoax from the Black Lagoon. However, Man. this seems to be primarily based on the description of the creature having wrinkles on their foreheads and a similar grayish skin color. Well, there's one thing that these Octo Men are missing, and this is very important. The Loveland Frogman did magic. Oh yeah, he this guy did. He didn't even have a deck of cards on him. No, he didn't. E- he didn't Poor even set. try. He didn't even have some of that like super duper uh, invisible string or anything like that. You know, no. the, you know the kind I'm talking about. The one where you like basically take a little bit out of a little bit, uh-huh. and then it's like hovering in the air. He didn't even try that. No. He uh, didn't have a theremin. He didn't have... Oh, it'd be great. A monster that traveled with his own theremin. That would be phenomenal. You know what? I think we have a, I think we have a business opportunity for our, our bipedal cats. Oh, I think we do. Oh. Teach them how to yes. use a theremin. Perfect. Teach them how to use a theremin. Did you just say perfect? Uh, no, but I guess. Perfect. Per- perfect is perfect. Oh, uh, there's no wrong better, way to though. do it. There's no wrong way to do it. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, we just have them with like little portable theremins and they just make weird noises for various cryptids. Mm -hmm. We make a killing. (laughs) Also Scooby-Doo villains. Yes. Um, I find that most of the theories around this creature seem to be trying to shoehorn the creature into existence. I don't have any real thoughts on the creature given how short the flap was and how little, literally no evidence there is for it. But the most probable idea... Uh, that I have on this creature is that it was like a, a piece of driftwood, and if I had to come up, if I had to force something that would fit everyone's <laughs> description, um, uh, I I would have to guess there would have perhaps been some unfortunate animal or animals, uh, given that it was seen in different spots that fell into the river and got covered in like algae or river grass or any number of weird. Uh, globby, droopy, gross shit that rivers have, and that what people saw, uh, like, this could account for the physical description of the creature and explain how, if true, one person saw it crossing the road, and perhaps the uh, animal uh, unfortunately died before it could cross the river uh, from falling in, or the... the, I I don't know. Some fucking animals fell into a river, got gloopy shit caught on them, and that's what people saw. Maybe they saw it crossing the road. That's how it could be multiple locations. Is maybe a couple deer fell into a river and got all gloopy. Man, they just had a. That was just a bad day for deer. It was a really. It was a really bad day for deer. Um, I I I personally think that the uh, uh, the tree theory makes a lot of sense. Yeah. For most of them, because like if you think about it, just like a root system poking up over the water it's dark you can't really see that's gonna look wild for everything but when it's not in the water it fits yeah and then i want to say the one time that it was not in the water brandon it was like because what there was the most questionable of witnesses yeah uh by so there's there's one lady who saw it hunched over by the ohio river but it could literally literally have been a tree brand like a, a a a root system of driftwood that had just washed up on shore. Yeah. The only one that saw it moving out of the water was the guy who is the least trustworthy witness. Yes. By definition. So I did that. That's it for this episode, but I did come upon a news article that I thought I would share with you. I'm seeing, I'm seeing. Okay. So Brandon, uh, I see a image and I want you to explain, is this related to the news article? No, I just liked it. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'm just going to say it's an image of Danny DeVito. If you are a Patreon, a patron, uh, make sure you read this episode. Uh, because it's wonderful. Okay. It's, it's truly, truly wonderful. And it's Danny DeVito. There's clouds behind him. And I'm not going to give away the big the big ending, because it's too gorgeous for anything. And I want to give our patrons a little something that they can say they have. Uh, and I love it. Uh huh. I cherish this. This is going into the Danny DeVito shrine in my attic. It should, mm-hmm. as it I should. S- I still need to. Liss is, Liss is probably not listening to this, so I still need to buy a 
the stand up Danny DeVito to put up there oh. in the off the off chance that Lissa ever goes up there because she's afraid of heights and you know how like my the way my my attic works is yeah. like you pull down the the stairs and it's like literally a 15 foot drop mm-hmm. <laughs> to the right of the stair of the uh of the ladder <laughs> so she gets a little bit freaked out by that but I just kind of want to put up Danny DeVito up there just waiting that Do way too it. if we ever if we ever sell the house yeah. And I ever move. Uh, I just have a dandy veto up there. Good. And you can just leave it for the next person. I mean, the last person left a knife. And uh, body... Okay, they left a knife, body butter, a CD, a basketball. Um, and there was something else. I can't remember. But it was really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a... Uh, uh, so I... I'd like you to read me this news article that I just sent you. Okay. So. Uh, All right. From the World News Daily Report, where facts don't matter. I think this is a joke. Uh, I don't know. It has quotes. It has quotes. Okay. Couple having sex outdoors in Bigfoot content. (laughs) In Bigfoot costumes. (laughs) <laughs> accidentally get shot by hunters it's okay to laugh because everyone lives an ohio couple's attempts to spice up their sex life weird this is a weird way of doing it uh with some kinky role play <laughs> turned horribly wrong last night as they are both shot by hunters while having sex in the woods in sasquatch costumes <laughs> Okay. Yes. Uh, now here's the question. Here's the question. Yeah. Did did the Sasquatch uh, costumes look like Harry and the Hendersons, or do they look like Chewbacca? Because this matters because it affects how sexy it is. Oh, I don't know. They didn't say what brand. Mm, okay. Oh man. So 43 year old Chris Mumford and 41 year old Janet Smith were wearing disguises and engaged in loud sex in a wooded area a few miles outside of Woodsfield when they were spotted by local hunters. Okay. Okay, it's not a disguise. (laughs) It's cosplay. Yeah. Jared Burns and his son were patrolling their property with rifles in hand, looking for signs of bears that may have awakened early from their hibernation when he saw the hairy creatures. This is a quote. I don't know what people from Ohio sound like, so I'm just going to use my regular voice. It looked like a couple of gorillas mating like crazy. They were standing over six foot tall and kept growling and moaning. (laughs) They really looked like wild creatures. Mr. Burns and his son were convinced they were facing a couple of Sasquatches, folkloric creatures said to be hairy, upright, like walking, ape-like creatures that dwell in the Northern American wilderness. I know there aren't any apes around here, but this is Bigfoot territory. (laughs) We really thought that this was our chance to kill one and finally prove they exist. The two men fired eight shots. What? (laughs) Hitting Mr. Mumford three times in the shoulder. Wow. Really good precision. Uh, The leg and... Oh, okay. I thought it was all on the shoulder. I'm just like, man, that's good. Good grouping. Uh, The two men fired eight shots, hitting Mr. Mumford three times in the shoulder, the leg and the abdomen. And hitting Mrs. Smith, Miss Smith, twice in the thigh and the forearm. Fortunately, the cupboard started screaming and swearing after getting shot, helping the hunters realize their mistake and call 911. There's a picture here of a man looking off to the side like he's seen some shit, because if this story is true, he has. Yes. Uh, Jared Burns and his son fired eight shots in the couple's direction, believing they were a couple mating a couple of mating Sasquatch. The adventurous couple was transported to the Barnesville Hospital, where doctors were able to stabilize their condition and no longer fear for their lives. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office has opened an investigation to determine the exact circumstances of the incident, and criminal charges could eventually be filed against the negligent hunters. Despite this unfortunate accident, Jared Burns remains convinced that these Sasquatches exist, and he won't hesitate to kill it if he sees a real one. Okay. Great story. One, this is why there's laws against hunting Sasquatch. Yes. <laughs> two, how is this fucking poor guy? I'm talking about the hunter. 
<laughs> sees two people going at it, and he's like, today's finally my day. Like, they got the one guy who is out waiting to shoot a fucking Sasquatch. Yes. So, I just looked it up. I did just look it up. Yeah. Uh, this is a satire site. Uh, yeah, but ignore that. Okay. Okay. I, I just, I want to put, before we continue on this, this train Their of tagline thought, is where facts don't matter. I get fair. it. I get that's it. Fair. It's still a fantastic thing. It's a well-written story. It's hilarious. And also not that far off from what I think could potentially happen. No. Like, uh, it's ridiculous the idea of people uh, doing the nasty as Sasquatch. Uh, although this does remind me of that one scene from Futurama uh, where Lur and his wife, whose name I can't remember, the, the Omicron Percy I-6? The, like, toad-looking monster. Yeah. The toad-looking aliens. Um, they, uh... They harvest Fry's nose because it's an aphrodisiac for aliens for a little, a hot second. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's called human horn. And um, they, uh, Fry is looking for Sasquatch in like a, a park or something. And uh, long story short, Sasquatch shows up and it, it ends up becoming an aphrodisiac for the aliens. Mm-hmm. Like it turns them on. And there's a scene of the two of them uh, doing it in the in the woods, and Sasquatch is just watching and going, "Mmm," because Sasquatch likes to watch. <laughs> Squatches do like to watch us. Oh my god, this is this is a very funnily written story. This guy's face is beautiful. Yes, I want to find out who this person actually is. How do I? So this this guy is like, damn it! I don't have my reverse image search on Firefox right now, but it's like, I feel like I've seen this guy's face before. <laughs> yeah, but I think it might be literally just because he has one of those faces that, uh, looks like somebody <laughs> looks like somebody who would shoot a Sasquatch. <laughs> he really does human i did a reverse google search and uh human yeah and he got human go- well got accurate human. oh here we go this is actually an, a person uh his name was uh dallas gilbert the world's greatest sasquatch hunter he died in 2016 Okay. So that's why I recognize him, because I've probably seen him while doing research for the show. <sighs> this is a really good story. When was this published? When did they, I uh... don't know. I saw it on Twitter. There's a lot of comments on here. Uh, it looks like it was 2019, April 1st. Okay. Maybe? Or March 2019. I don't know. I'm loving... Okay, so first of all, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the comments mm-hmm. because this is great. Uh, so the second comment is from a guest. It's, I don't think the shooter should be car- charged. They didn't shoot at people in their minds. Response, I don't think it's bear season. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. Okay, okay. Brandon, so yeah. I'm, I'm reading this and... Oh, okay. So, Buddy McCool is the name of this person. I would not mind having sex with that couple when they recover. Interested in other couples, too. I'm 19 male, kind of cute. Oh, my God. I feel like I don't think people think that this is a parody site. Uh, Do-do-do-do. Do, 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 do. Idiot redneck. If it was a Bigfoot, why would you want to kill them? Uh, there's, there was, there's a few fucking funny ones on here. Perfect example of gun lovers. They have to shoot anything just because they can. You're an idiot. 
<laughs> okay, okay, one more. This is my favorite one. We had a cut. We had one living here back in the eighties. Pregnated half a dozen women before he mysteriously disappeared. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, I'm gonna. Should I post a link? To, I should post a link to that. Uh, in the show notes. Uh, you can. I have it in uh just below Danny. De- uh, yeah, Danny DeVito. Okay. Um. So I'll post a link to that. It's pretty funny. Uh, I want the original author to get whatever credit they deserve, but I don't even know. If funny. It's a really funny story. Uh, it's really good. Weird. So, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, I guess it's plug time. So, as always, we have a website, critpediacast.com. Our Instagram is at critpediacast. I have not posted anything to our Instagram in a hot second. Oh. We get followers, but mm-hmm. I don't post anything because, like, it's kind of hard to post pictures because I don't want to accidentally infringe on people's copyrights. Yeah, I get it. Um, so I really only post pictures when I can take the picture. Uh, our Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us and tell us ideas for cryptids, uh, it's CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. Um, the Patreon is, has three tiers. Uh, Hoop Snake, which kind of gets you nothing but our thanks. I just wanted to have a hoop snake tier. That's literally the only reason. That, we that's have why. It. It's a do- yeah. That's literally the only reason we have it. It's a dollar. Uh, Hodag for two dollars gets you all the the episode copies, and Jackalope for five dollars gets you mentioned in the episodes. It gets you access to a special uh, Discord channel on our Discord, which exists. Um, I don't know how I can link the Discord so people can join it, but I'll I'll look it up at some point. I have it set up now that Jackalopes will automatically get invited to the Discord as the Jackalope tag and all that stuff. So, it, it works now. Um, Actually, everyone gets invited to the Discord who's a patron. Uh, and they get their, speci- their respective rank on the Discord. Mm-hmm. And I think I've set up different uh, channels. We've had some more activity in that recently since uh past couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But... As a jackalope, you also get to be thanked. Brandon, do you want to do it this time since I think I did it last time? I can do it. Then we'll thank our dear jackalopes. Clay Sinclair. Who's the, he's, he's the longest longest standing jackalope that we got yeah. going on. And then we got yeah. Marty Von Party. And we got Bird Schneider. Mm-hmm. We do, we do, we do. Who we all do. of them, they have opinions on Transformers that I don't necessarily agree with, but we'll leave it there. I don't necessarily agree with any of your guys' opinions on Transformers. You're the most wrong, though. But, excuse me? (laughs) Do you know how many thousands of dollars I spent on Transformers? Because I don't want to even calculate it. (laughs) Oh, I did enjoy that, uh, the Chicky Nuggies. I watched that whole thing. Oh, Chicky Nuggies? I watched all the Chicky Nuggies. Yeah, I I had the feeling you'd watch it all. It was, uh, interesting. There's, I like Baby it. Yoda wanted chicky nuggies. I'm listening to it right now, actually. Are you actually? Yeah. Uh, there's also a fun thing that I've I've been trying to uh, curate. Uh, so uh, if you've listened to this podcast, you'll know that I have a bit of a tendency of uh, finding weird shit on the internet. Sorry, I, I, I... <laughs> you were really you were really rocking out to yeah. chicky nuggies. Uh-huh. So you'll know I have a, a bit of a tendency for finding weird stuff on the internet. I made a cursed images uh, board on our <laughs> a cursed images uh, threat uh, channel. Yeah, and inside of it, uh, I post all the most cursed stuff I find. <laughs> the most recent one is uh, the Lost Four Kids opening for Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, <laughs> it's cursed. I assure you. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. If you have any monster requests or stories, feel free to send them. We have a – actually, on the Discord, we also have a place for people to recommend monsters as well. It's under cryptids. Uh, Clay just recently recommended the Alaskan Ice Monster in the Fresno Night- Nightcrawler. Um, I think we did an episode on – I think we did a, a sub-episode on the Fresno Night- we, Nightcrawler. We Crawler. did a sub on the Fresno – I forget what it, episode it was, number it was. It was like three – like it we was super early on the back on yeah, yeah, yeah. it's on like it, the back end 
Yeah, we might we might be able to do a more full sized episode on it, but it's kind of tricky because it's one of those weird ones. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. There, there's there's not much to it. It's kind of like there's really not much to them at all. And then there was lore built onto the back of a thing, so that there's once you dig deep, there's really not. There's even if you don't even have to dig that deep. There's just not a bunch to really go on because there's no history or folklore behind it. It's it's basically like a, Slender a Man. Yeah. It's basically Slender Man. It, it, or The Rake. Do you know about The Rake? Uh, I read about it. I think uh, one of our mutual friends had me Google it once. <sighs> I had the feeling I know. I, I'm, I'm going to assume I know which which mutual friend. Uh, you're probably right. Okay. Uh, all right. That's all I got for the podcast itself. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram uh, at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. You can email me at, at brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. If you want to follow my dramatic descent into madness, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at mu2057, on Twitter at jfdunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Let me Our- tell you, let me oh. tell you, they're getting weirder and weirder every day. Those 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 particular threads. Oh, so. they are. <laughs> uh, our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail dot com. Yes, it is. Um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things have gotten way too weird for my liking to be cool kind of to be honest to be honest it's it's just gotten bizarre 